Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Brockle Aluda, and there are five versions of it. We're going to be starting with the one called the YBR, which is the factory performance package that speaks for itself. So what car was the inspiration for this? My best guess is a Buick GSX, because if you look at the body style between the two, it's very similar, and this one even has the exact same paint job you could find on a GSX. So let's go ahead and drive this thing around a little bit. We'll do a quick 180 to get out of the parking lot, and then we're just going to cruise along the roads. We have a full tank of gas since we're coming out of a, a gas station, I would assume, but we're not going to use it all. We're going to crash long before this gas tank runs out. In fact, we're going to crash before we even go through a gallon, probably, the way I drive. Like, I already have a plan. There's a corner coming up. We're going to hit it like 100 miles an hour and uh, watch this thing get wrecked up. Nice, nice. Got it rolling through the air, even. Oh, don't go in the water, though. Turn the engine off so it doesn't flood. I want to see if it'll still drive. Pull it out of the water. This is a recovery mission now. <laughs> ah, it's actually going to get recovered. Whoa. Well, we recovered the bumper, sir. You need the car, too, you idiots. Get the car. All right, the car is out. Let's see. Turn the engine back on. Will it start? Yes, it will. All right, the engine still revs up. Does it actually put any power down? Oh, it does. I can't steer it all, though, so it's just going to go back in the water and drown again. What a shame. So let's get into one of these, and then we're going to back it out of here and drive it in the opposite direction of last time, so hopefully it won't fall into the ocean. As long as I didn't damage it right there, that could have uh, been a harsh hit on the suspension. So 0 to 60 isn't too bad. It takes a couple of gear shifts, though, but there we go, up to 60 miles per hour. Handling, on the other hand, is pretty bad. I mean, it handles like an old American muscle car, which means it's great in a straight line, but uh, if you try to take it around these corners, you better hold your breath because it can get scary. Like right here, I'm just trying to not spin out, really. All right, now we're going up a hill, though, so that makes it a little bit easier not to spin out. Although I'm still, like, I, I start to slide the second I put the power down all the way. So you got to have pretty good throttle control to drive this thing properly. If you don't have good throttle control, well, drive it up a mountain and watch it crash instead. That's always a viable option. Got a nice little spiral to it. And dodging through the trees magnificently. I hope this thing can still drive. All right, come on, accelerate some. Oh, it's not doing nothing. All right, let's just go ahead and bring it back up to the road, and then we'll keep on driving from there. And while we do this drive, we could take a look at the interior of this thing, which is kind of interesting. The inside looks identical to a Moonhawk. If you look at the glove box, it even still says Moonhawk on it, but it works. Like, if you look around in here, everything looks appropriate and normal. It's just not what you would expect, because the outside is so GSX. You would kind of expect the inside to also be a GSX clone, but it's not. It's just a clone of the Moonhawk. So anyways, let's go ahead and go back outside now and uh, keep driving from there. Bouncing all over the place. This thing is going to crash hard with this road. Look at this. I'm in the air. No control at all. I don't know how I haven't crashed yet. I want to slow down on this corner because I know this thing don't corner good. Got to be careful on these corners, man. Like 60 miles per hour. That's pushing it with this car. Look here. Oh, 60 is probably going to be so fast I would have flown off the edge, actually. Got a nice long tunnel right here. Once we exit out the tunnel, we can go and crash into something, because we'll be going a nice speed. Looks like we can kind of just boop. Nice. And then an extra crash right there. Car is upside down in damage. We can flip it upright to look at the damage a little bit better, though. That's a violent way to flip it upright, but there you go. Damage looks uh, pretty reasonable. Although the stripe is kind of like tearing away from the car. It looks a little funky otherwise, though. No problems there. So we'll just freshen this thing up and then keep on driving. We'll go through the dirt road just a little bit, but this car is not a dirt road kind of car. Like, it's just kicking out all over the place. It wants to be on a paved road where it can get some traction going. So there's a little bit of traction, and then we can floor it. And we only spin the tires somewhat. Like, I'm going 30 miles per hour, and we're still spinning the tires when I floor it. This car is uh, way overpowered for how much traction it has, which makes it fun to drive, though. You just got to... Be very careful around these corners and with that throttle. Look at this. I'm trying to floor it and I can't quite yet. There we go. Flooring it now. Like, once it upshifts, it's at a low enough RPM where I could actually floor it and not have it spinning too badly. But even here, it's just it's getting a little bit out because it just has so much power for the thin wheels on the back. I mean, look at those wheels. They're itty bitty things. Itty bitty wheels. It's kind of like a Hellcat. It's like you would expect much bigger wheels on a car with this much power, but... It works good enough-ish. <laughs> Ooh, what happened to that rear bumper? I didn't notice that until just now. It has to have been recent. I wouldn't have noticed if it was like that for a while, right? Well, let's make it have more problems than just the rear bumper. Let's make it every bumper have a problem. Which is just two bumpers, actually. 
Like, I don't know why I say every bumper. I should have just said both bumpers. That's a completely different looking impact, and it is banana-ing. I'm having a lot of things recently in videos where things try to become a banana. So we need something that's not yellow. That's the thing. So we're going to get another one of these, and we're going to go with the Miami, which is more of the stock version of the car. You know, the YBR is the factory performance. This is the regular, nothing super special version. Like, like I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's very normal. It's so normal that you could actually drive it on a dirt road and it doesn't really complain that much because like, yeah, I guess I can do that. I'm an average car. Average cars should be able to do average things like drive on dirt roads. But the other one's like, no, I am a sports car. You don't dare drive me on a dirt road. I'm going to slide all over the place. So we go back up on the road. We just drove off in pretty much the exact same spot, which is kind of funny. And you can see that this one, it's much slower because I'm flooring it most of the time and it's not like the back end's kicking out or anything. It's just kind of cruising along. Going at a pretty low rate of speed. So this one has the looks, right? Just, it doesn't have the speed like the other one where when you floor it, it scares you a little bit. This one, you floor it and you just start moving a little bit like a modern car. Like a modern economy car, I should say. Getting up to 40 miles per hour on this hill is a struggle too. I'm trying and trying. It's just like it gets to 40 for a second, but then it gets a little steeper and it can't hold that speed. We got some buildings though. We made it to the top. You know what you do when you get to the top? You gotta go back to the bottom then. Wee! Oh, wait, now there's we. All right, this is gonna be a long tumble probably. Well, maybe not. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty long tumble. And radiator are finally damaged after all those flips and stuff. Oh, wrapped around a tree. I saw that coming. Overall though, the damage seems reasonable. So let's go ahead and swap maps. And I want a map that has a little bit less elevation change, but still some. So I think Stairway Mountain could work. And for this section of driving, let's go ahead and change to the YBRX, which is custom built for YBR. The guy comes with tons of power and a race band Hollywood performance package. It even goes fast backwards, which I want to test first. Well, actually, I have tested it, but I want to show it to you guys because it's hilariously stupid. This thing has multiple reverse gears. You know, you'd find that maybe like a big rig or something like that, but you would never see something like that on a high-performance muscle car. But yep, here we are, about to go backwards down this hill. So right now, we're just in reverse. There's nothing special about that, but once we actually get moving, we'll be in reverse two and then reverse three. It's a little bit hard to uh, do this because everything's backwards for steering, but there we go. We're now in reverse three, and there's only three gears right there, so we're going to just top out. And let's see how badly this thing will wreck going down this hill. I'm going to just... Let it go straight. I'm not going to do any assistance or anything. It hits the ground like that. It's going to bounce. And then it's going to do the roll. Let's see. Are we going to get a big roll or just a little roll? There's a big roll. Well, medium roll. Medium roll. Because the big roll, it happens so fast you can't even count it. That one, that was easy to count. Can we do any sort of driving still? Uh, I can't even change the gear when I accelerate. Normally, it'll actually change gears when you accelerate. That's interesting. It'll still reverse in R3, though. Now let's do some actual driving with this. You'll notice it still has pretty thin tires, but these things are able to just grip the road and go when you floor it. So like right here, we're doing a 10 mile roll and flooring it. No skid marks left, it just grips and goes. But it can be a little bit weird in the corners. Sometimes it goes through the corners nice and easy like that, but other times it can get a little bit bouncy. And it just kind of depends on how you enter the corner. Like if you enter the corner with early braking and then kind of accelerate through it like this, you can really start to see it kind of like bouncing all over the place right there. Like, that was just kind of intentionally making it bounce to demonstrate that. But here, I'm not trying to make it bounce, but you see, it's still kind of bouncing all over the place. But we're going fast through the corners. It's this really weird kind of thing where it feels like you must be going really slow because you're bouncing all over the place. But then you look at the speedometer, you're like, wait a minute. I'm still moving pretty well. And I don't know how to, like, how to drive this thing properly. Like, it feels like if you could master it, man, you could go through these corners so fast. You, like, use that bounciness to your advantage, but I just can't seem to figure out how. Also, at times, the uh, bounciness can make it really easy to roll this thing, and then I'll say that, but it's impossible to roll on command. It just sometimes you'll get into a bounce where it's like, it's time to roll, and then the car just rolls. It's the weirdest thing. Like, I just feel like I can't control the suspension of this thing, but I can control the vehicle around the corners. It's the weirdest feeling. Because normally in a car, you can kind of control the body roll with your steering inputs pretty easily. This one, the body roll is just all over the place that I'm on for the ride. Is the weirdest thing up oh, there we go there's just a tight bump under that wall and 
there's an easy flip. I mean, we didn't even hit that hard or that fast, but like I said, this thing, it can just start to roll on you, and before you know it, you've rolled it over. Kind of like an SUV in that regard. Like, watch this, just a little bit up on the hill, hill and up, roll it over. Like, we barely went up that hill, but that was enough to roll it over. It is just the strangest car. But I really enjoy driving it. I mean, that's the important thing. It drives strange, but I enjoy it. Anyways, let's just uh, do some wreckage real quickly. Get that thing up to a nice speed, and then bye-bye, roof. Bye-bye. And let's see, can we get this thing upright and, uh... What was, uh why does my mouse keep disappearing? There we go. Like, the camera wasn't moving properly. Alright, so put it there, and... It can move the tires, but it cannot actually accelerate. Okay, let's bring it back to the top of the hill. So the next version of the car we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the red one, which is uh, the Neologic Mobile. It says custom built for Neologic, a super drifty, easy to slide, import spec version. You can adjust horsepower with boost control. No need. I don't need any adjustments. The way it is, is perfectly fine. Uh, this is one of those cars that likes to drift at low speed. So we can go around all these corners like... 20 to 30 miles per hour and be drifting through them so like right here we're only going about 20 to 30 on the speedometer and we're sliding all over the place again about 30 40 sliding real steep and trying just to not crash into anything this isn't exactly the best map for this because this is actually an area that requires skill to drift around these but since we're going so slow because this car likes to drift at such low speeds i can actually manage although i'm probably gonna yep pop that rock right there i knew that was coming but like right here, look at this, going real deep in it, and it pulls through because there's a lot of steering angle. So you can get it in pretty deep and then pull it out because the low speed plus the steering angle means a lot of forgivability if you treat it right, which means not doing that kind of thing. All right, so let's go ahead and do one more drift around this corner. See, like, look at this, look at this way kind of out of line for where I should be on that corner, but it's still pulled through. So here we go, sliding through it, and... We're done. I, th I say that's done because I don't know if I could do much better than that. So let's uh, oh, apparently slide a little bit here accidentally. What I want to do is just kind of slide it off the edge. I keep drift gone bad. Like, oh no, I can't drift good and off the edge. Oh, and back onto the road eventually. Can we keep driving? Oh, we got stuck. Oh, it's glitching? Oh no, that's a sign. Ha! <laughs> okay, now for a really dumb idea. What happens if we give the AI this car and tell them to drive? Because it has so much power, you really can't keep it in a straight line easily. So I want to see if the AI incidentally drifts it, basically. So we'll tell them to go in a random direction, and then we'll just follow them and see how they do. So first corner, eh, not really drifting. Let me show you how to do AI like that. Ooh, but on the straights, look at them go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do it too. Oh, I see what's actually happening. They're trying to straighten it out, but the AI is like overcorrecting, miscalculation, attempting to straighten, and it just keeps overcorrecting every single time. All right, so now they kind of have control over it. Come on, time to drift. Oh, what are you doing, man? You can't come to a complete stop in the middle of a drift. I can't drift at two and a half miles an hour. So it turns out they don't like drifting. They don't like it. Come on, tandem. 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 No. What are you doing? Well, they're still going. I stopped because I thought I would have to reset them. All right, we got another chance for tandem. Tandem drift, bro. Drift. Drift. He's not drifting. He's not drifting. Oh, there. He, he, it's not drifting so much as accidentally losing control of the vehicle at the most inconvenient times because it's not sliding around the corners it's sliding after and between the corners like what is this dude doing come on man we gotta tandem this thing tandem tandem collision because you suck at drifting ai what if you try to do a tandem drift on your own like driving two cars at once that'd be the stupidest thing ever i don't mean in real life i mean in demon g drive like i bet you could do it with a little bit of slow-mo and it'd be ridiculous looking but i'm not gonna try that for the next test though i want to go to a map that's a little less curvy because the next car is not good for curves so let's just move over to utah usa and this is a good map for cars that are fast in a straight line which the next car is it's the spires drag version which is actually faster than the normal drag cars in the game already those ones feel like they have 2000 something horsepower this one feels like it has 3000 some horsepower and you can really tell when this thing accelerates the way the body just kind of contorts all over the place from all the power is hilarious to watch before we actually really try to accelerate, I want to make sure we have a nice long straightaway in front of us. So we're just going to start right here. We have a little bit of a rolling start and then floor it. And you see kind of just leaning all over the place as I was accelerating right there. Wheels up in the air. And we're already up to almost 200 miles an hour. We are at 200 and now we're crashing because we have no steering really at those speeds. Because the front wheels are up in the air still almost. And that is just way too fast to try to go around a corner. But that's where it remains of the car. You can still rev the engine somehow. We'll just go ahead and... Refresh it, and then we'll try driving along this long road right here. If I can get it to spun around. There we go. 
Now this one I'm actually going to try to maintain a little bit of control over this thing. I don't want it to just fly off the road immediately. So we'll cruise along at only 100 miles an hour until we get through the uh, corner sections. Then we'll have a nice long straightaway to really floor it. I got to get out of the dirt though. This thing wants to go in the dirt for some reason. All right. It's like whenever I accelerate, it just it starts to lean in a direction. You just try your best to keep it straight, but it does not want to stay straight. Look at this thing sliding all over the place. We got up to 230 miles an hour and another 200 plus mile per hour crash. And it almost ended up on top of the outer edge of the map, which I have never done in a car before. I might have done it with a plane, sure, but never a car. All right, now we're just going to floor it and have no control at all once I get on the bridge. So like right here, just gun it. And we're going to see how long I keep this thing going straight. Because we have some curves coming up. And I don't think I'm going to be able to keep this thing straight through them. Do the best I can though. We're going to go on the right side. Because I think it's a little bit easier maybe. Nope. No good. No good. Ooh, I just stripped the car. I just stripped the car in like half a second. So there's the frame. And over here. There's the body. It's drifted so cleanly too. Like. Yeah, it's mangled to bits, but I wouldn't expect to be able to identify it that well. Oh my goodness, where are the other parts? Like, that's just some of the parts. There should be some, like, fenders laying around or something. Uh, apparently those things just flew off into the distance and are gone forever. Oh wait, what is that? That's a wheel with a pulse. That looks weird. What else is there? Right, here's another piece. All right, there's a uh, one or two of the fenders. It's kind of a mess of parts. It looks like that's... Okay, that's two fenders and then the front grill as well. <laughs> that is crazy and somehow one in, uh, one wheel remained attached you can see the engine trying its best to go but it can't all right with this much power we gotta do a leap of death run and see just how far this thing can fly so let's just make our way over to leap of death and of course we want to go to the top and i gotta decide on a color here what color do i want it because i don't want it black going down the hill because it's kind of hard to see things so how about we go with another yellow car no we've done too many yellows we haven't done an orange one, so let's do an orange one. Although purple would have worked too. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, it's black anyways. Okay. All right, flooring it. Getting it up to speed. Only 110 miles an hour. It just couldn't get the traction as well as some other vehicles. So it, yes, it went really fast. But not as fast as I was expecting. I was expecting it to actually go a little bit faster than that. Either way, a long time until that initial impact. And when it happens, this car is going to disappear. Oh, or not. That roll cage held on really well and the frame stayed attached. Apparently it doesn't look like the frame's attached. It's spiraling so fast, but it has to be attached, otherwise the camera wouldn't be here. And it's gonna be a two-hit car. Two-hit car and into the water. And that'll do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. Side note, you might have noticed that throughout this video there's some spots where it just kind of flashed to black for a second. Now as far as I could tell. That started when I installed this mod. I'm going to do some testing to see if it's just a coincidence or if that's actually the mod that's causing it or what. But I am well aware of them happening and it's happening to me while I play. It's not like a recording or encoding issue. That's all.